Hello, this is a section taken from a lung mass and I am just going to outline some of the uh, major areas of interest. Over here in this region, we have the bronchus and this is the lumen of the bronchus and this is the bronchial cartilage. In this region, which is a little bit bluer on low magnification, this is actually the mass itself, which is a tumour and we will focus on this later. And if you look more in the periphery, this is the uninvolved benign lung tissue. So we're first going to look at the bronchus, just to recap ourselves, um, just to do a quick recap on some uh, normal histology. We will then look at the normal peripheral lung parenchyma, and then finally we will focus on the tumour. So here is the bronchus, and uh, we can see that there is bronchial cartilage in which we can see the chondrocytes sitting inside the lacunae within this blue-gray uh, myxoid stroma. We have the peribronchial glands here, which include uh, mucous glands, and some of these granular bluer ones are serous glands, so seromucinous glands. And then we have the bronchial epithelium and the lumen. So of course the epithelium is lined by pseudostratified columnar cells. And if you uh, look carefully, we can see the cilia. So these are ciliated columnar cells. This structure, in case you're wondering, is a blood vessel. Let's move on to look at the peripheral benign lung parenchyma. So here is an area showing some alveolar spaces. And if you recall, uh, the alveoli are lined by very flattened pneumocytes. You can barely see the nuclei. And the alveolar septum is actually very thin. So it's the pneumocyte. Then it's a small capillary vessel, which you can see here with the red blood cells inside. And then we have the alveolar lining cells of the adjacent alveolar space. So this is the normal lung peripheral parenchyma. We also have some small uh, bronchiolar lining cells here, which we can see, which again are ciliated columnar. And uh, towards the more distal airways, they actually are just columnar or low columnar cells. Now let's move on to the tumour. And the area that uh, I want to focus on is here. We can see at this magnification that there are a lot of these irregular, very angulated glandular spaces. And if I zoom in a little bit, we can see how angulated, almost triangular shaped these irregular glandular spaces are. So we can still appreciate that they are forming glands. However, these glands are extremely irregular and this is a very atypical architectural feature. You also notice that there's a lot of uh, broad stroma in between these glands, not like the alveolar septa that has hardly any stroma at all. So this is desmoplastic stroma, which is a little bit more cellular, which shows more fibroblast proliferation and inflammatory cells. And this is classically associated with invasive carcinoma. So we can appreciate the architecture of abnormal, complex, branching, angulated, irregular glands. We can appreciate the desmoplastic stroma. And the next thing we're going to look at is the high magnification view. And we're going to focus on the nuclear features or the cytomorphologic features. So if you look at these cells, the nuclei are actually much larger compared to the alveolar lining cells. We could actually hardly see those nuclei. So they're very large in comparison. And many of these nuclei actually contain small but quite prominent nucleoli that I'm pointing out here. Another one here and here. And if you also look at the nuclear membranes, some of them are appreciably irregular. They're not rounded or very oval or smooth. You can see in this particular cell that it's quite irregularly shaped. And there's also a groove in the nucleus. This is another nucleus with a groove. So the grooves actually reflect uh, irregularities of the nuclear membranes because they are folded nuclear membranes. And again, you can see the irregularity of the nuclei. So we have nuclear enlargement, we have irregular nuclear membranes, we have prominent nucleoli. These are some of the features of malignancy. And one other feature that we see here 
is the raised NC ratio. That means the nucleus is relatively big. It occupies a lot of space in the cell relative to the cytoplasm. So we have high or raised NC ratios here. And here again, you can see the prominent nucleoli in the malignant cells. This is a fairly well differentiated malignancy because it is forming very well formed glands and because the nuclei are not markedly pleomorphic. So in a higher grade malignancy, we would see that there is a lot more variation in nuclear size and shape. That means there is greater nuclear pleomorphism and we will also see more mitotic figures and perhaps even necrosis. So the diagnosis here is a malignant gland forming tumor of the lung and therefore this is adenocarcinoma of the lung. So in summary, we can appreciate that this tumor is gland forming, that there are irregularly shaped glands and complex glands, that there is desmoplastic stroma and that there are cytologic features of malignancy. And therefore together these features make up adenocarcinoma of the lung. Thank you.